guys, how are you? In this tutorial, we'll have to create our program using the Java. At the same time, we'll uh, discuss how to use the generics Java programming. So we'll be discussing about generics of Java generics or what we call generics Java programming. So what is generics? Well, of course, we all know that generics, it can be a ubiquitous type of information. You can use different types of uh, data types or you can use uh, different purifiers and then put that in one. You write once and then you put that in different uh, uh, applications. So let us start right here. So to start with the Java generics programming, it's very simple. All you have to do is to start first with your class. Okay, for example, we have here a public class and then we have here data, rec. This will be our class. The class is the blueprint of the program. So let's has start here. And then we have we need to infuse here the public static void. Sorry, static void main. Then we have here the following arguments for that. Okay. This is the calling program. This is the main part of the Java codes. Okay, so we have here the public class at the same time. This is just to review. At the top of that, you can uh, put here the field members of the class, of course, the class, and of course, other constructors. But for our targets, to use the generics. Now, uh, like for example, now if you want to print uh, the string, you can print the string, you can print the integer double. So these are part of your data literals. So the, the literals are your float, string, character, you have the boiler, you have their, uh, what you call is the, the, the integer. Those are the common, what you call this common uh, uh, data literals for your Java programming. Now, what will happen here is we're going to create our own generics at the bottom. For example, um, in, 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 a, in, a, in a common programming, you are there to uh, identify the string, the integer, and then you write different types of functions for that. But here, we're going to create a generics to write it once at the same time, use that generics in different category. Like for example, we have to use the class. But again, you can use the public class if you are using other, um, other folder, but here, for the sake of the discussion, we're going to put it in one class. So class, like for example, we have here class uh, data rec2. Okay, this is the data record2. And uh, we're going to put here the less than symbol and greater than symbol. The purpose of this is to create a label for the generic. So we put here the T. T stands for what? Uh, types of data. Okay. Or you can put another label for that. But I will be using T so that it, everything will be lucid. All right. So we have to use it T here, right here, of course. And you can uh, notice that we have two classes right here. We, this is our main class. At the same time, this is another class for that. This is for generic program. And uh, the purpose of this is to display the string. Okay, We can display the string. We can display the integer. We can display the double. So we need only to write once. At the same time, put here and declare our uh, constructor right here to print different types of data. Okay, So let's finish this one. For example, we have here, of course, the... Uh, the, 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 the data type. So we can, uh, we can use this as part of our class constructors or maybe uh, the modifier, okay? So T, for example, let us display here, uh, what would be the great variable for this? T, like for example, name or, okay, data name. Okay, let us put the data name right here. So T now is part of the data name. This is now generics. It could be an integer string, okay? So that's the purpose of that. And at the same time, let us create here, of course, the constructor for that. So we're gonna put the parameters for the constructor. So what is that parameters class? Okay, let data rec. Remember, we can use the parameters constructor. You can check my previous video for this for the OOP program in Java. But here, we're gonna use T. Okay, for example, T data name. So we have one parameter right here. This could be an integer, or this could be a double or a string. Okay, so let us move, and then let us put here for the default parameter for that. So this data name calls to data name okay so there you have it so we have finished our code right here and we have here for the uh, our, our class for our uh, generics okay how what will happen right here is this is very simple it's just like we declare this t of everything of something to be a, a modifier for string for string at the same time for integer or double and of course we're gonna set it uh, the value of this name to a string or to an integer and at the same time we're going to print it. So we have to use the void. Okay, this is a dynamic uh, void is of course as just a repressor. Using void, this is part of dynamic programming in Java. 
Uh, well, of course, you can use a static and invoke it directly to Java. But again, if you're using void, then again, we can create a constructor for the owner of the class and, of course, reference to it to, to, to that program. So void is, like, for example, we have the void dips. Okay, we have the dips right here. And then we can, we can print the output here. So this output, these uh, methods will display depending to what we are going to declare for this data no, later on in the main program. So we have here, you say data name. So we have one method right here inside our Genex program. So we have the methods display and we have here the constructor for that and we have one parameter and of course the modifier is T. This is stands for types of data. It could be an integer string or other type of literals. All right. I think literals is, has a conflict with that. Uh, of this type of data but we can use double we can use integer and string okay um, I want you to review that so what will happen here is of course let us uh, mark this data underscore that record okay let us create our own constructor right here instantiate the constructor so we have to use data rec and then well of course uh, what will happen is of course this is part of your generic program right now okay so let's say Data right, we declare our object right here, our variable to instantiate that our object is, let's say, uh, x equals to new data rec. Okay. We locate now, x now is the owner of the data rec. All right. Now, I'm sorry. We will be using the data rec2. Okay. Data rec2 will create, of course, the x as, you know, as uh, the owner of data rec2. Okay. That's a very simple explanation. And then we put here the sim the, the, the the greater than, uh, greater than sentence symbol because we are using the generics programming. And at the same time, we're going to put here, of course, this is where we put the generics. It could be what? This is blank. I think this is blank no? for me. No, this is blank because we're, we can use this for different purposes to display the string, display the, 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 the integer, display uh, other, uh, object, uh, other uh, types of data. So since we are using this now, I will use data rec as force. No? If you haven't yet declared this, I can use here for string. All okay? right, that is string. So we declare data rec a string and of course we instantiate this, this, this data to own the data rec and at the same time with the parameter of that. Where is the parameter? The parameter is right here. So this parameter now, it is this gener generic. This is open. Open for string, open for integer, open for double, right? So I'll put here hello world. Okay, so that's it. So after that, what will happen? So we see we have already declared this data and at the same time we're going to call, of course, the uh, methods. Method is to print this. So we have to call the method and we have already instantiated x as the owner of data rec2. That's the plain explanation for me. Or maybe in higher explanation, this is a reference now to the class data rec2, generics data rec2. And of course, we can use x point. Point is to invoke what? The, uh, the, the child, uh, all the field, the field members of the dips. Okay. This is to print the value of data name. So let us use that dips. Okay. And of course, when we run the program, but before that, of course, let us review the first program. We declare the data, data direct as main of the program. At the same time, we uh, instantiate data direct string x for data direct to because we want to print the hello world. So this is how the constructor goes. We have the T here, stands for any data, type of data, and data name for variable for that. And then we create this uh, parameter right here. And at the same time, we create a method to display whatever names will come out at the top. So we are displaying the hello world right here. So when we run the program, okay, let us run the program. Let us wait for the program to come out. So we have an error right here, slight error. What's that error? Well, of course, the syntax error. Where is that? So system data print line name in our methods. We, we forgot to put the semicolon and let us run it again. So we can see that we have this, the output strings. Okay, wrong spelling, sorry. Uh, a bit excited to string to, to run the pro though I, I, I did not recognize that uh, that string. So here I have the hello world right here. As you can see, the purpose of this is just like you declare first the field members at the top. At the same time, you have here the instanti instantiations of the variable. To make it simple, well, of course, uh, you instantiate because X will be the owner of the new class. Okay. So what happened here is this class data rec2 is another thing. So just like you are using the in uh, inheritance in other term. So T is the type of data, but if we change this T to something else, say for example, we change this to uh, store one, okay? Store one is a label. You, you can use a different uh, what you, a generics uh, label for this thing. You can use different generics for this team, and uh, at the same time, you can use it here. So for example, we have to use store one, space data name, and of course, you have store one data name right there. And what will happen is, well, store space data name, 
this is the name of the of the label and then when you run the program of course the same thing will happen you look what happened so the same thing labeled store one as part of generic codes okay let us put it okay let us change this to okay the, the constructors was not able to disappear here so let us use the store one this part of the store one okay this that's the label so verify the problem and at the same time you need to match the first part with the second part you run the code after running the code of course the same thing will happen you can create your own generic type and label in this codes you can use t type of data same time you can use different labels generic labels so it's all, all, all the they're all the same okay now we will have to create another uh, program for that the integer program we have the string program and we create the, the integer program okay let us proceed to create our integer data right here so first we have only the string and uh, well of course one of the advantages of using generics is of course you can create as many as you can for your functions and for your methods and then you need only to call it in the main program okay you don't need to repeat the process you don't need the agile methodology just to write for the string the integers and for the double or other data types so let us create another right here so here the purpose of that is you can create your own label here okay the label will serve as your uh, data data generics for the program so we have already created our program right here we don't need to create or write another program here but we need to only to instantiate our data at the top of this program okay what will happen Okay, let us use here the program at the top. So we say data rec, then you put here integer, and then you have here x, y equals to new data rec2. Okay, and then put, do not forget the less than greater symbol, and then you're going to put here, of course, data rec2. Of course, we need to use the integer, so we need to put here 10. Okay, now what will happen if you want to print that? You don't need any more to create another methods, but invoke only that print statement at the bottom you have we have created uh just uh no I, I, I don't, uh f five minutes ago no no not my not five minutes <laughs> so we have to uh invoke this display dips and then when you run the program you see we have uh, in writing this generic program you only, we need only to create this stuff and we can write different types of data here so we declare the string and we declare the integer when you run the program let us check what will happen so we have here the hello world, okay, x10. I don't know what happened, x data rec, x10. Okay, so so we have here one error. I don't know what it's that error right there. So maybe the error is here because we were not able to put the data rec2 as part of the generic class. Okay, that's it. And then we run it again. This is very important. So we have here hello world 10. So what happened is we need to provide here, of course, the system, that out, that print line, just to bring the output to the next line. And then you put here, of course, this, the, the, the blank. Okay, common sense. So you have to run it again. All right, so you have here hello 10. So that's all. So we need to explain that again. And we have the data rec right there. At the same time, in our main program, we have the field members. Of course, one of the field members, uh, what, what are the field members right here? We have here the following class. It's an sensing x to, the, to be what you call this, to, the, to be referenced to data rec 2. And this is where we declare, of course, uh, x as to print the uh, hello world. And uh, for another, what you call this data, we have the integer. So that's the purpose of generics. Thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe and share this channel. Thank you.